This is Colin O'Keefe for LXBN, and joining me today is Steve Delchin of Squire Sanders and also of the Sixth Circuit Appellate Block. Uh, Steve, yesterday we saw a flurry of activity at the U.S. Supreme Court on the constitutional challenge to the new health care statute. Uh, can you summarize, you know, the latest developments and what's going on? Absolutely. You know, yesterday, no less than three cert petitions were filed with the U.S. Supreme Court asking the justices to address the 11th Circuit's high-profile decision or its ruling that the individual mandate under the health care statute, the uh, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. is unconstitutional. Now, as I've re been reporting extensively on my firm's blog, SixCircuitAppelleBlog.com, a divided 11th Circuit back in August held that the individual mandate is unconstitutional because it exceeds Congress's Commerce Clause power. Mm -hmm. Now, the government has filed a cert petition asking the court to reverse the 11th Circuit's decision. It says that, you know, look, the Commerce Clause supports the uh, health care statute. The government is also suggesting that the Anti-Injunction Act uh, serves as a bar to the plaintiff's challenge <laughs> because their action is essentially a pre-enforcement action seeking to restrain the assessment of a tax. Um, what's interesting is that the 11th Circuit did not seek en banc review at the 11th Circuit. And in doing so, it probably saved at least a year of delay. Mm -hmm. And it's signaling to the Supreme Court that, you know, look, this, this case has to be decided now, yeah. not after the current term. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the government cert petition, uh, the plaintiffs also filed two cert petitions. Um, we had a cert petition from the governors and attorneys generals from the 26 states that brought this action. And... Um, we also had a petition from the National Federation of Independent Business, which filed a cert petition saying, you know, the court needs to decide this case. The delay is bad for business. Yeah, yeah. You know, in, that's interesting. That's interesting. If, if the plaintiffs challenging the individual mandate prevailed at the 11th Circuit, if they won there, you know, why are they filing cert petitions with the Supreme Court? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. And, and it really comes down to severability. When the 11th Circuit majority upheld the individual mandate back in August, it, it did not invalidate the entire health care statute. It just said that the individual mandate is unconstitutional, but the other parts of the statute can continue to be enforced. Mm -hmm. So that's why the plaintiffs are coming in and saying, look, court, um, if the individual mandate is unconstitutional, you have to strike down the entire statute because it is an essential component of the new health care um, overhaul. Mm -hmm. So that's basically why we see the uh, plaintiffs coming in. They also want, frankly, to uh, get, have the Supreme Court decide this as well because there's uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the question of the day is, you know, what is the U.S. Supreme Court going to do? You know, is it, agree is it going to agree to hear one of the current challenges to the health care statute? That is certainly the question of the day. And in my view is that there's a very good chance the, su the Supreme Court is going to step in here and hear the challenge in, in one of the cases that is before it, either from the Sixth Circuit or the Eleventh Circuit. Um, and there's a couple reasons why. First, let's just talk generally. There are institutional reasons why the court is going to step in here because – this is one of the highest profile cases in the land right now, and it's a broad and encompassing statute taking up, you know, one-sixth of the American economy. The sooner that the nation finds out whether this statute is constitutional or not, the better off we'll be. Businesses will be able to adjust their you know, activities accordingly, as will individuals. So that's one reason. It's an institutional reason. The second reason is that, you know, Supreme Court review is always more likely when the government is seeking review, as they are here. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the government has a success rate at the U.S. Supreme Court that, frankly, a lot of private law firms would be envious of. <laughs> so the fact that the government is involved here is another reason why the Supreme Court likely, or more likely, will take the case. And, and third, here's another reason. The circuit splits. Yeah. You know, the Supreme, Court, the Supreme Court usually steps in when there are circuit splits. And let's, let's look at the circuit splits here. We, we have the Sixth Circuit in the Thomas More case saying that that individual mandate is within Congress's Commerce Clause power. By contrast, you have the 11th Circuit saying, no, it exceeds Congress's power under the Commerce Clause. We've also got the, uh, the 4th Circuit that just, just held that the plaintiffs don't have standing because it's, their, their action is barred by the Anti-Injunction Act. And then we also have a 3rd Circuit decision that says that the plaintiffs don't get any, even get into court because they haven't alleged a particularized in, uh, injury. Um, therefore, they lack standing on that basis. So... We have circuit splits, and we have different layers of circuit splits. So for all of these various reasons, Supreme Court review is much more likely. Mm -hmm. You know, and if the Supreme Court does agree to hear one of the health care challenges, you know, which case do you think it will hear? Is it going to hear the, the Sixth Circuit appeal or the Eleventh Circuit appeal? Or is it possible to hear both, both of them? Yeah, I mean, it's possible that the two cases will be consolidated. 
But, but I think that the 11th Circuit might be a better vehicle for the Supreme Court to take. And, and here's why. First of all, in the 11th Circuit case, there's no issue of standing. Uh, in fact, the government has conceded that the plaintiffs have standing. In the 6th Circuit, by contrast, it's not as clear. And, and in fact, the government filed a motion to dismiss on the eve of oral arguments, saying that the plaintiffs in that case did not have standing. So that's number one. Number two is severability. The 11th Circuit actually addressed whether the entire statute should be invalidated if the individual mandate is unconstitutional. The 6th Circuit did not even address that. You know, the plaintiffs in the 6th Circuit case, in the Thomas Moore case, they simply said, look, if the individual mandate, we're, just, we're simply seeking the individual mandate to be invalidated, not the entire statute. So, um, and, and third, by the way, for what it's worth, the, the, um, the government yesterday in the Sixth Circuit case said, don't take the Sixth Circuit case, take the Eleventh Circuit case. <laughs> the government, be government believes that the Eleventh Circuit case is a better vehicle, and that may hold sway with the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you know, lastly, if the Supreme Court elects to hear the challenge of the health care statute, you know, how do you think things will play out? Which way is it going to go? Yeah, I mean, I get that question all the time. Um, I think that the Supreme Court is going to come out five to four. Um, but which way it's going to come out, it's, it's, it's really not clear. It's going to be a closed vote. You know, I saw Justice Stevens yesterday being interviewed. Uh, he thinks that the, uh, the health care statute will be upheld as constitutional. He hasn't really read any of the briefing, but maybe he knows something about the internal dynamics of the court as, as far as how this is going to come out. Um, in any event, it's, it is the question of the day, is the health care statute constitutional? The challenge for the Supreme Court is to articulate a constitutionally significant limiting principle to rein in the power of Congress under the Commerce Clause. Mm -hmm. how, how do you uphold the health care statute without also holding that the government, that the Congress has unlimited power uh, under, under the Constitution? And that is ultimately the challenge in this case, and that's why it's such a high-profile case. It's very, very interesting to watch, and it'll be interesting to progress, because I know this is going to come up you know, right in the middle of the next, right in the middle of the political season next year. I want to say thanks to you, Steve, for joining us. Once again, Steve Delchin of Squire Sanders. For more coverage of this case, be sure to check out the Sixth Circuit Appellate Blog at sixthcircuitappellateblog.com and, of course, lxbn.lexblog.com. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Colin.